Hey guys, Sean here and welcome to the F1 Word. Now it has been a difficult few years at McLaren and following reports of a revolt among staff, it looks as though there could well be some upheaval internally. So what have the reports suggested and is it time for change at McLaren? Well, it was reported over the weekend that the team were facing a revolt from disgruntled staff and that they are looking for former team principal Martin Whitmarsh to intervene. According to the reports, patients broke earlier in the week when Eric Boulier led the post-race debrief in Woking, at which it was admitted they were at a loss to explain the car's lack of performance. Staff were apparently so furious at what they saw as the incompetence of their leaders that they planned to enlist Whitmarsh's support as a last-ditch attempt to help turn around the ailing team. And Martin Whitmarsh himself told the Daily Mail, People at McLaren said they would send me a letter about the situation. I told them not to send it to me, but to Mansur. I piled in a little bit. I love the team and I am desperately sad to see what it has become. It needs a big change of approach. There is too much politics between the main figures. I think a number of them have to go. I have explained my view to Mansur and it is for the shareholders to decide what to do. The team used to be all about winning in Formula One. Now they are looking at other avenues, going to race in IndyCar and Le Mans, for example. They are great things in themselves, but McLaren going in that direction rather than making Grand Prix racing their sole priority makes me shudder. I live locally and I bump into friends who work at McLaren. They are disappointed with what is happening and remonstrate with me. Tim Goss's departure pitched me over the edge. Tim has a fantastic intellect and is a hard-working, non-political, value-adding member of the team. He was scapegoated. He may not have all the answers, but he would work on a solution from first principles. Whitmarsh ended by saying that he is open to helping McLaren find their form again. He added, If a delegation showed up at my door, I wouldn't turn them away. They know where I am. This season was very much expected to be the year that McLaren made strides towards the front end of the grid and the team even claimed that they were looking to challenge Red Bull. However, the team have just 40 points on the board so far this season and even appear to be in decline already. The team scored 12 points in Australia followed by 10 in Bahrain, 6 in China, 8 points in Baku. They nabbed 4 points in Spain and then failed to score in Monaco and Canada. All of that leaves them 94 points behind Red Bull, again a team they set as their benchmark, and 16 points behind the Renault Works team. In fact, it's no exaggeration to say that McLaren have been consistently the slowest and worst performing of all the Renault powered teams this season. And all of that after claiming that they have had the best chassis over the last few years and it was the Honda engine holding them back and not their own ability. As I've already said a few times this season, this year would have been seen as a positive step forward for McLaren had they not spent yet another winter making claims and setting targets that were clearly unrealistic. Red Bull have been working with Renault for over a decade and have Adrian Newey on board. McLaren were never going to challenge them in this first season with Renault. Never. But for a team who have claimed to be able to build the best chassis on the grid, they are also well off the pace versus the Renault manufacturer team. But to be honest, this shouldn't really come as a huge shock. Go back all the way to 2014 and the team were powered by comfortably the best engine on the grid at the time. Of course, that was the Mercedes power unit. Yet, they only managed to finish fifth in the constructors, 139 points off third place Williams, 224 points behind Red Bull, a team powered by the worst engine on the grid at the time, and ended the season just 26 points ahead of Force India. Now, I'll accept that, of course, those gaps are inflated due to double points being awarded in Abu Dhabi. But even so, McLaren would still have finished a long way off Williams and Red Bull and narrowly ahead of Force India either way. If the team were truly able to build the best chassis on the grid, they would have been title contenders. Okay, not the most amazing driver lineup in Button and Magnussen, but one is a massively experienced world champion. And between them, they only had two retirements all year. So the drivers and the team should have picked up a lot more points than they did. 2014 also represented the last time the team scored a podium. That was, of course, courtesy of Magnussen in Australia and obviously as well due to Ricardo's disqualification, Button picked up third place at the same event. I suppose the point I'm making is that although there is no denying that the last few years, in particular the Honda years, have been a mess and have left the team massively uncompetitive, it's not like it was all down to Honda and it is quite clear that the issues were already there before the switch in 2015. So with all that in mind, what needs to change at McLaren? Well, frankly, the whole team needs a rework. Zach Brown is fantastic as a salesman, but clearly not at running a Formula 1 team. And as much as I do sort of like Eric Boulier, I don't really believe that he is the kind of figurehead needed to turn the team around. He's almost a little bit too nicey-nice. And that team needs a firm kick up the backside, something I don't see Brown or Boulier being able to do. 
there are a lot of people out there possibly watching this video as well that think that Ron Dennis is the answer. And whilst I agree he is the kind of person that will take a firm no BS stance, I think that could cause more problems within the team. And let's not forget, it wasn't as if the team were delivering in the end when he was still on board. Again, look at 2014 and indeed 2013 as good examples of that. And that is also why I doubt that Whitmarsh is the answer, certainly not at, say, a team principal level, if that is indeed an option that's been discussed. I don't know if it is. But perhaps at board level, he could have some sort of impact. The thing is, though, people talk about Ron Dennis coming in and being able to sort this all out at McLaren. The staff are looking to Whitmarsh to help them out. But it seems to have been forgotten that they were both a part of the team when it came to ditching Mercedes power and moving to Honda power. They were both very much part of that decision-making process. And McLaren were already underperforming before either of them left their respective posts. So I don't see either of those as the answer. Unless, of course, the staff are just looking for somebody to come in who knows what McLaren's core values are to try and stabilise that team. I don't know how true these reports are, but it is clear from what Martin Whitmarsh has said that something is going on and staff are just about sick of it. And who can blame them, quite frankly? This year has not been good enough and I don't see them turning it around. Of course, revolt among staff isn't going to help the situation in the short term, but perhaps in the long term they can find some sort of fix. But the truth is that this should have been sorted out a long time before, certainly before it got to this point. There must be changes and they need to come soon. The chassis is poor. There's no getting away from that. They are clearly not getting the best from the engine. They don't appear to be capable of challenging those ahead of them. And as I've already mentioned, seem like they could be on a downward spiral already this season. And yes, I know we're only seven races in, but they're falling a long way back. What is also quite telling for me is that Although he has scored the overwhelming majority of the team's points so far this season, even Fernando Alonso seems to be struggling to pull the best out of that car. And that's a driver who has proven time and time again that he is more than capable of outperforming any car. The team are even lacking in terms of sponsors. You only need to look at the car to see that. And that's despite having a pretty decent salesman like Zach Brown leading the group. They do also look set to lose one of the team's biggest appeal to any potential sponsors, particularly on the F1 side of things in Fernando Alonso. And obviously, if McLaren do decide to enter IndyCar next season, then Alonso could well stay part of the group. And of course, that will bring in sponsors, but not necessarily on the Formula One side of things. If I'm being completely honest, I'm actually surprised. I didn't seriously expect that they'd be able to challenge Red Bull this year, but I'd be lying if I said that I expected it to be this bad. In fact, I genuinely felt like they would be better than the Renault works team and would be on for fourth in the constructors. But I just can't see that now. I do want them to turn this around because at the end of the day, the more competitive teams we have with a decent budget that are able to compete, the better the show will be for us as fans. The problem is, I don't really see where McLaren can go from here. As I've said quite a bit over the last few days and weeks, I will be very surprised if Fernando Alonso stays on the F1 side of McLaren next year. And with a limited number of experienced options in terms of a driver replacement for next season, I'm not entirely sure how the team can expect to make their way back up the grid in the near future. So that is what the reports have said and as always, they were my thoughts on it all. But what are yours? Is this what you expected from McLaren in 2018? And if you had total control over the team, what would you do to turn it around? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I will be back tomorrow with the French Grand Prix preview. But in the meantime, you can follow me on social media. Links to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and to Discord are all in the description down below. But as ever, thank you for watching. I've been Sean. This has been the F1 word and until next time, goodbye.